Hey everybody, I'm B. Jermaine, aka The Terrible Australian, and welcome to the fifth edition of The Godzilla Diaries. Now, in this episode, I am going to be talking about Godzilla vs. the Sea Monster and Son of Godzilla. Alright, let's get right into it. First up, Godzilla and the Sea Monster, is, or it's also known by other titles as Ibira Horror of the Deep, or Godzilla vs. Ibira, or Godzilla, Ibira, Mothra, Big Duel in the South Seas. Why they didn't use that for the English language title, I do not know, but that's actually the uh, actual English translation of the original Japanese title. Um, this one is actually, I did, this one was really enjoyable. Like, I'm not going to say it's one of the best Godzilla films in the franchise or anything like that, but I did, vi but I thought it was a pretty solid entry overall. And in this one, sorry, it sort of like starts off with a very sort of focusing on the humans to begin with, because um, the story for this one is about a young, a young guy by the name of Ryota, whose brother is lost at sea. Now, sort of speculation that Godzilla might have done that or, or whatnot. So he decides to uh, go find a boat and go out and search for him. And along the way, he meets up with these two other teenagers and they sort of team up. They go find a boat um, and they steal one, but they find a guy on there who they think is... Uh, <laughs> yeah, sorry. Uh, Sorry, my bad. Who they think is <laughs> is the owner of the boat, but he's actually a thief who's on the run. So, so all to get together, they go to uh, find Ryota's brother, and eventually they stumble across this island, where they soon discover that there's sort of this um, organization that's taken over the island by the name of the Red Bamboo, and. They've actually taken the um, the natives from Infant Island, which is the home of Mofra, and take them over the island to use them to create weapons. But the thing is, the island there's a monster that surrounds the island by the name of Abira, who's sort of like this sort of giant lobster creature, and who pretty much anyone who comes into contact with the island, he pretty much jumps out and destroys them. And also. Uh, the natives of Infant Island, sort of, the Red Bamboo, the organization, sort of forced the the natives to make this can sort of like this um, repellent type of stuff that actually can warn off Ibira so they won't attack their boat. And of course, uh, Riotto and the others sort of stumble upon them, and they meet this um, native girl, and they sort of all team up together to try to save them. And of course, like all the movies so far in the genre in this particular franchise Godzilla shows up and of course wreaks havoc and there's also some pretty awesome fight sequences between him and Abira and um, just like an invasion of the Astro Monster uh, there's basically another rock scene which basically just with Godzilla throwing rocks at Abira and Abira catching the rock and throwing it at Godzilla and it basically turns into a volleyball match between these two and also, Mothra shows up, and, he, and Mothra has finally escaped his caterpillar form and actually has turned into the giant moth that we all uh, love her for. So eventually, she shows up towards the last half of the movie to help Godzilla defeat Ibira. And as well as to save the natives and take them off the island. Again, spoilers for this movie, sorry. I should have stated that at the beginning of the video that there will be spoilers, but... No, these are Godzilla movies. I don't think there's really much... I mean, there's nothing sort of life-changing about the spoilers, I'm going to say. But um, but overall, I think it's a pretty solid entry in the franchise. It's really enjoyable. The month, uh, the sort of design of Abira is pretty cool. And the sort of the fights between Godzilla, Abira, and Mothra are pretty awesome. Um, I do think, like, the... The bad guys, the Red Bamboo, are actually kind of forgettable villains. Although I did enjoy their comeuppance when Abira, because um, the natives and one of the uh, friends of Riotto, they decide to uh, sort of make a fake batch of this repellent against Abira. And this, the Red Bamboo's boat gets out of the ocean, and of course it doesn't work, and so their boat gets smashed to smithereens. 
and it's just pretty but overall it is a solid entry um one thing i can say about this entry that um that sort of sort of made me laugh is that is it just me or do all the monsters in this in this film sleep a lot i mean there's a couple of times in the movie godzilla takes a couple of naps Mothra is pretty much asleep throughout most of it until the end, and Abira, who 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 knows what he's up to under the ocean, so it's kind of weird um, in that regard. But overall, it's a solid entry, not one of the best, but overall, it's enjoyable. I mean, and also the cast were pretty solid too. So um, I think the bad guys could have been a bit more stronger, or maybe their motivation could have been stronger as well. But but hey, it's a solid film. So um. Godzilla vs. the Sea Monster, I'm going to give this a solid three and a half. Now, on to the next entry, uh, Son of Godzilla. Now, I forgot to mention this in the last video. Um, in sort of the, the last few Godzilla films, well, pretty much, in my opinion, since King Kong vs. Godzilla, Godzilla, that the series, the series has sort of moved away from being this sort of dark, gritty sort of thematically rich monster series into something much more light-hearted, fun, and kid-friendly. They've sort of been sort of working that up over the last few films, and it's sort of this entry, uh, got Son of Godzilla, is pretty much is the epitome, is pretty much the height of that kid-friendly factor that the series has been going for the last few films. And... Like, which is fine, because, you know, like, it's it's pretty much, it would be pretty hard to keep the series, keep going dark and gritty and, and all that for many, many films. So, and it's always good to have a bit of a change to spice things up a little bit. And I must admit, the idea of the series kind of going very, a little bit, I was, I was a bit worried that this would be very kid-friendly. And this film is, I'm not going to lie, but it's done pretty well. And I have to say, I did really enjoy uh, this installment. Um, and you kind of, and like, I don't know, because uh, the plot for this one, spoilers, um, is about this um, this journalist by the name of Goro, who is uh, played by Akira Kubo, who actually was in um, Invasion of the Astro Monster, but playing a completely different different character and he would also star in the next film after this one uh, destroy all monsters again playing a completely different character so i'm not sure what's the, what's this series habit of pretty much bringing back actors from who appeared in other films in this franchise only to play them get them to play different characters i don't know what's going on there but um it's sort of about this the, but anyways back to the plot uh goro sort of got goes to this island where a bunch of scientists are experimenting with the weather and so it's a very overcomplicated uh science um bit of ex experiment that they're doing about changing weather patterns and stuff like that maybe even changing it all the different types of weather all in the one day and the the film do does have a little bit of elements of whether this this experiment that they're doing could be a very destructive power and it doesn't really delve into that that much but um i will say i did think the cast were pretty solid in this one i have to sort of and they were all really good performances but the one i think really stood out the most was an actress by the name of bibari made up i think her name is so forgive me if i <laughs> butcher names who plays the character of uh, Seiko, who is this this island girl, who is the daughter of a scientist who's lived on the island many years ago, and she sort of lived and raised on this island, and uh, Goro discovers her, and I thought she's wonderful. I really enjoyed her performance. She's very likable. She has she's got she doesn't even have to say anything to express what her character's feeling, and she's a lot of fun, and um, and also this one's definitely one of the more funnier Godzilla installments. I have to say, Miniela, Godzilla's son, I'm not going to lie, like, even though he is but ugly, but at the same time, there's this weird, fi I think he's also just, just the cutest thing ever. I don't know why, 
maybe it's because it just sort of reminds me of like like uh, like pug dogs and stuff like that, or those, those kind of ugly, cute little dogs. But um, and you'd think the character would be annoying, but <laughs> from the very beginning, this movie makes you feel very sorry for Miniella because basically these giant prey mantises, whose names are, they do, um, I believe they were called Kamakuras, but I'm probably pronouncing that wrong. Who pretty much discover the egg that that Miniella's in smash it open and pretty much poor little mini yellow is getting poked by these giant prey mantises and of course Godzilla sort of shows up beats the shit out of these prey mantises body slams them and all that and the poor little thing poor little mini yellow it's like throughout the course of the movie he gets abused so much he actually gets hit by Godzilla's tail at one point and then a rock actually hits him in the face and but in a way, it, it sort of played for sort of laughs. But at the same time, you do it makes you do feel sorry for the poor little guy. And eventually, as the movie goes on, like when he's very little in the movie, he's pretty terrifying in just the animatronic creature that they designed. But once they, they actually make him a little bit bigger and, and he's more of a player by a guy in a suit, um, it, he's very cute and, he, and there's a lot of humorous moments with the character. I really enjoyed the scene where he basically play Godzilla's trying to sleep, and he and Miniella is playing jump rope with his with his tail. So every time he, Godzilla's tail swings back and forth, he's always jump roping it and accidentally stepping on Godzilla's tail. And also during the film, their sort of relationship between each other gets becomes very strong. Godzilla sort of tries to uh, show. Miniella the ropes on what to do, like how to breathe fire and all that, but Miniella just bro blows um, sort of fire rings instead of the whole uh, big flames that Godzilla does. And poor Miniella, sometimes when he gets it wrong, Godzilla just smacks him in the back of the head, so... <laughs> Again, it's played for last, but... And it's very slapsticky, and of course another there's another monster in the movie by the name of... And I've just got my notes up here. Uh, Kumonga, who's like this giant... Uh, spider. He was pretty creepy looking, and of course, and of course, Godzilla has to fight him and protect Miniella, and also the scientists have to find a way to get off the island, and and to stop the monsters as well. And going back to the cast, there's actually an actor by the name in the film. I can't remember whose name was, but he was really good. But he played like this one scientist who really wants to get off the island, and he pretty much goes psychotic, wanting to get off this island. I thought he did a pretty good job too, and he was my second favorite performance after uh, Babari Mater. And back to the movie, back to the monsters. And um, yeah, so it, the movie does a really good job at sort of it. It is a kids film. This one is a definitive kids film. It's played for laughs. It's very kid friendly, but it's really enjoyable, and it actually does those elements extremely well, and it's enjoyable. And um, and I have to say, the ending to this film, spoilers where um, basically the scientists use what's left of their experiments to make it snow on the island. And after when, um, when all that's happening, uh, Godzilla and Miniella sort of go off, wander, do their own thing, and then poor Miniella gets so cold and he falls into the snow and then Godzilla, in just in a very beautiful little moment, goes over to Miniella picks him up and hugs him and they're just in the snow together and thank goodness the, in as one of the scientists say in t cold temperatures they actually the Godzilla creatures actually hibernate because it, it always looks like they're about to die and I, I, I just thought that whole ending was so beautifully handled and a little bit touching as well and um, just to see this Godzilla actually being compassionate towards uh, this little to his son um, the movie never explains what their relationship is. I don't know if if it's a biological exper um, biological their biological uh, family, or he is adopted Miniella, or maybe Godzilla's asexual. I'm not exactly sure, but it doesn't really delve into that at all. But but the movie does a really good job at setting up their relationship and making you care about. Miniella and Godzilla because they actually make a really sort of really good father and son team. So overall I really enjoyed this one. Uh, 
both this and Godzilla vs. the Sea Monster, I give three and a half stars. I really enjoyed both for different reasons. Yeah, so pretty solid entries in the franchise. Well, that's it. That's the end of this fifth edition of the Godzilla Diaries. Now keep a lookout for the sixth edition where we're going to go into one of the films from the series I had seen and I look and I look very much look forward to watching it again, which is Destroy All Monsters and as well as the follow-up to it, All Monsters Attack. So keep a lookout for that one and I'll see you guys later. See you everyone.